Hello and welcome to Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. I'm Becky Parker Geist and I'm your host. Audiobook Connection is your place to learn about the audiobook creative process and for authors to learn valuable tips on producing and marketing your audiobooks. This podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Today we're going to talk about your target audience and how your target audience and being clear about who that is can affect your audiobook production. The first thing, and perhaps the most obvious, is your narrator selection. We've addressed choosing your narrator in various aspects in earlier podcasts, but this is a different, well, it's it's related, very tightly related to that conversation, but I want to take it in a slightly different direction today because I really want to focus in on who is your target audience. It's really valuable information in so many ways, especially when it gets to the point where you are ready to market your audiobook. But even from the very beginning, it's really helpful to know who your target audience is. Some of the ways that you may have already thought about this may be in relation to, for example, back cover copy for your print edition. This is a time when you are especially focused on who is your target audience, so you know who you're writing that copy for. With an audiobook, it's going to affect your actual production. And here are some of the ways that that's true. First of all, let's think about tone. I'm going to give you an example of how I might read this same text, which is nonfiction, but in a completely wrong tone. If I was thinking that my target audience for this text was somebody who is a high-level executive who's on the go, really wants uh, very direct, quick answers to specific problems, I might approach it this way. I slowly came to understand that married people usually argue and to assume that this was simply part of being married, but this was not enough for me. There was one thing I wanted to know, and my curiosity troubled me endlessly. I would see a couple arguing— I heard them shouting. I listened to them fighting, being aggressive. I saw and heard all this loud rattling of weapons. And what I wondered most was, what beverage did my father serve people who entered ready for war that made them leave lovingly arm in arm? Now, I'm going to guess that how that came across to you as a listener felt as weird as it did to me as the reader. This is a very different kind of book than that tone would suggest. Knowing that my audience for this text is really more along the line of someone that might be in a counsel situation where they were receiving counseling from me, I might approach it very differently, something more along these lines. I slowly came to understand that married people usually argue and to assume that this was simply part of being married. But this was not enough for me. There was one thing I wanted to know, and my curiosity troubled me endlessly. I would see a couple arguing. I heard them shouting. I listened to them fighting, being aggressive. I saw and heard all this loud rattling of weapons, and what I wondered most was, What beverage did my father serve people who entered ready for war that made them leave lovingly, arm in arm? So you can see it has a whole different feel if you just take a different tone with it, and that is largely based on knowing who you're talking to. Okay, we're going to do another comparison. This time we're going to talk about tempo. Being aware of who your audience is might suggest a faster or a slower tempo or narrative pace. One of the interesting things about audiobooks these days is that the most of the apps allow you to actually speed up or slow down the narrative pace using technology. But it's ideal to have it narrated at a pace that is appropriate for the text. 
I'm going to read the same few sentences from this text, which is an excerpt from Joanne Smith Ainsworth's book, Expect Deception, which is the second book in her series. Balmy breezes crept through the opened French doors, allowing exit to a flagstone patio and extensive estate grounds. They, the Operation Delphi team, were the White House's top-secret psychic defense against Nazi mind control. They were attempting to raise their psychic powers to new levels. Distractions could wreck the experiment. Now I'm going to read it a little bit faster. Balmy breezes crept through the opened French doors, allowing exit to a flagstone patio and extensive estate grounds. They, the Operation Delphi team, were the White House's top-secret psychic defense against Nazi mind control. They were attempting to raise their psychic powers to new levels. Distractions could wreck the experiment. Now, I happen to know that this book, this series of books, is targeted a little more to an older audience, even though younger audiences would certainly enjoy it. But it takes place during World War II, our main character is in the U.S. waves, and the author is very clear, and she knows that her audience is an older audience. Knowing that, it makes more sense to read it at the pace that feels comfortable, feels more relaxed, doesn't feel like we're pressured to go forward or we're in a hurry. Most of the people listening to this audiobook are likely to be retired and may even have some challenges with hearing, in which case a slower pace and good enunciation is going to be really appreciated by them and helpful to them. Another aspect of how the narration itself can be dramatically affected in regards to who your audience is, is attitude. A fun example for this one, and I don't have a text from this handy, although I did narrate this book, is Karina Fabian's Nita Life, Zum the Exterminator. It's a really fun book. It's very tongue-in-cheek. And if it were done with an attitude of that it was like super serious, like you would treat, for example, a typical nonfiction book that was, again, for like a business context— It would sound ridiculous. But knowing who the audience is just really allows it to come across with a lot of fun. There's a lot of playfulness in it, even though it's done very tongue in cheek. So it has that attitude of taking itself seriously, even as we're poking fun at the whole zombie scene. Let's take a short break and then we'll come back and we'll talk a little bit about how to figure out who your target audience is if it's not clear. Here at Pro Audio Voices, we love working with authors who have a big goal in mind. They really want to reach out to their audience around the world. We're here to help make that happen. It starts with our pre-production process, where we're evaluating and determining what elements of the audiobook we can leverage to both create an excellent listener experience for your listeners as well as drawing them to your website to engage with you further. It continues on through the production process, making decisions that will enhance and support your big goals, as well as creating a great listener experience. But we don't stop there. Once the audiobook is live, we move on to helping you market your audiobook with the Audiobook Marketing Program. Come check us out at ProAudioVoices.com. To schedule a call to talk about your audiobook project, click on Get Started. Okay, I'm going to give you just a couple quick ways to start to get a handle on who your audience is. You might feel that target for your particular book is really obvious, and that's great. Having a narrower focus is really helpful It will allow you to target your marketing to reach your audience. So here are those two easy ways to start to get a handle on who your audience is. Let's imagine that you've got one of the toughest general genres, because it is so general, and that is general fiction. Okay, first of all, every piece of fiction, no matter how general, 
has a specific targeted audience. The trick is for you to figure out who those people are. So, step number one. If you have any fans or followers so far, even if it's only one or two, who are they? Look at your following. Look at your fans. Who are the people who are raving about how great your book is? Those are the people you want to take a look at as a group. And if you only have one, pretend that one is a group. Let that one be your avatar. So you want to look at what similarities do they have? It could be anything. It could be their gender, their age range. It could be that they love sports cars. It could be that they love red cars. It could be that they ride horses. It could be that they drink wine. Whatever their similarities are, and whatever way you can figure out what those are, it's helpful to put some attention on that. One of the simplest ways to figure that out is actually to get on the phone or meet with them or whatever way you can communicate with them and ask some questions. Get curious. People love to talk about themselves, and you'll be doing them a real favor just by asking them about what kind of activities do they like to do? Where do they like to go? What are their interests? You can ask all kinds of questions, and most people will be thrilled that you are so interested in them and listening so well. You'll also want to listen to the very specific words that they use when they talk about your book. You'll want to ask them about that, too. What was their favorite part? What did they enjoy about it? Why would they recommend it to somebody else? Don't be afraid of those questions. They're really powerful. And again, the people that you ask will be grateful and appreciative that you have an interest in hearing what they have to say. Now, here's my other tip, and this you can do even if you don't have any readers yet. And that is, when you think about which of your friends or colleagues or associates, when you think about who you would like to share your book with, who might enjoy your book, what is it that makes you either select or disqualify those people in your mind? What is it that you think will make them more likely to enjoy it? So those are my tips on how to start to identify your target audience and then also some ways that they really make a difference in your audiobook production. If you have questions about this, as always, I encourage you to reach out to us at Pro Audio Voices. We're here to help. Thanks for joining us for Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. Please take a moment to subscribe at audiobookconnection.com. The podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Learn more at ProAudioVoices.com. Again, thanks for being with us, and please join us next week. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com.